So y'all help me, but my voice will get low. before you as an empty vessel, asking that you would pour your spirit on us. Lord, we ask that you would search us in anything that's unbecoming of you, Lord, that you removed in this day. Lord God, I come because I'm a servant of the Most High God. Just want to say thank you, Lord, for doing all the good things and blessings that you have bestowed upon me. For looking beyond my faults and seeing all my needs. 
Lord, I come to you this morning as a humble servant because I know that you are the God who sits high and look low. I know that you are God who cannot stand to see your children cry or be in pain. So Lord, we come this morning because you said come with an open heart. And Lord, you are there to heal us from this land. Lord God, we come this morning because we look to the high hills where help, where our strength comes from. We come, Lord, because we are on our bended knees, asking that you will just forgive us. Lord God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, let your spirit come into this place. Let our minds be refreshed, knowing that you have to look beyond all of it. And you have given us the great spirit of forgiveness. We thank you this morning. Lord God, we pray for those who are not here, but on their way. We pray for every church that's open in your name right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we pray that somebody will seek you out this day. And that your glorious power be, will be seen, Lord. Touch right now. Raise up a standard of people right now that you will be proud of. Lord, I come right now as a humble servant. Ask forgive me of all the unclean thoughts that I might have. All the things that I might say, things that I went, places that I went that I shouldn't win. I ask for forgiveness, Lord. Lord, I just want to do right in your eyes. Lord, I ask you right now that you touch those in the hospital. I ask that you go to the nursing homes. Lord, I ask that you go to our young people and touch them and let them know that the blood is crying out for them. I pray for police officers, Father God, all of them are not bad, but we pray for them that we'll be able to weed out the bad, as you said, let the cherry grow up with the wheat. But have your way with all of our life, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, touch right now. Let the power, let your word decree all of our spirits. And Lord God, we just want to do your will in the mighty name of Jesus. We look forward to 2016. If we don't make that journey, we just want you to say, Servant, my faithful servant, job well done. Come and take your rest. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that no one leave this altar the same way they came. I pray in Jesus. Amen. 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 Love somebody as you leave this altar. Touch.
thank God for bringing us through uh, 2015, in spite of, the, like we said, the loss of jobs, the loss of friends. That's right, that's right. But uh, God is good. He yes, gave Lord. us to make it through. Even in spite of all the things that we went through, he's right there all the time. Yes. So yes, I Lord. just thank God and give him the praise and the glory. Amen, amen, amen. And I just thank God for being faithful. And I thank God for being a healer. Yes. Because he has truly been healing my body yes. this year of 2015. Amen. Amen. Two days ago, I was really sick. And yesterday, even I was sounding like many mouths. <laughs> And I woke up this morning not even realizing it until I went into White Castle. And I realized, hey, that's me. That's me talking. It's bad. God is faithful. And I thank him for being faithful to his word. I thank him for being a healer. I thank God for being everything that I need him to be. Amen. And so as I was still putting on my clothes, I, I went into the bedroom. I said, I'm going to just lay here for a minute. Then the pain got so severe, it's like somebody just twisted my arm. Then I started throwing up. My wife said, OK, we're going to the hospital. So I just thought it was in a gesture. I didn't know, but I eat a lot of junk food. <laughs> so when they got me to urgent care, the doctor in urgent care, they started working. They never did tell me what happened. They just started working, putting out beads and putting out things on my chest. And, and, uh, and from there, from urgent care, they had to send me to an emergency room. Um, all right. And the doctor, as we was leaving out of urgent care, the doctor told my wife her exact words. God didn't know he still had work to do. And so that's my testimony. God I've been over here. He gave me some more days to work on. And then as I started praying, he said, I'm going to give you a little bit more time to get it right because you're not ready yet, folks. So I just want to say that's my testimony. A lot of people don't live from heart attacks. I had five arteries closed. God just blessed me. Yes, yes, yes. Excuse me, y'all. I just think about the goodness of God. Yes. But that's my testimony. I thank you for it. Yes. Thank you for just being a compassionate God. And saying, oh, so we know that you're not right. So hopefully in 2016, I'll get a little bit better. God bless you.
and downs yeah. and crazy turnarounds and yeah. and some blessings too. But isn't it just a, a blessing to know we have a hope because after this life, yeah. after this life, there's another life and there will be glory yeah. after this. Whatever we've been through down here, after this, there will be glory. Come on, stand to your feet. Put your hands together. Those of you who know this, help me sing.
church say amen. Now well, let's take time this morning to pray one another. Lift our hands, shake and the glass to see. For all the blood of Jesus, it will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest power. It's come to the lowest power. Take your seats at this time as we continue in the spirit of worship. We thank God for the fellowship, for how good is it for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. We ask that we come back, find ourselves in the presence of God. For God is good. We are delighted to have in our service today, as old folks used to say, on this side of the dirt, and not in the hospital any longer. My cousin, Brother A.J. Deloney, is here today. Thank God for keeping him, for God continually keeping him and his family. We're glad to see Alex is in the house today. I see my eyes stay red bird to the south. I see you over there, Sequoia. I see you in the house. We're so very proud, we're so very proud of everyone in our church. When you really look at the young people in our church who are in college, those who have recently graduated from college, those who are in grade school, grammar school, you all are a great people. You are a great people. And one way you can tell a good a good church is you have you have people that are academically inclined, that they didn't go to school, they work hard. Another important aspect of the black church down through the years has been that in the congregation, you would have people that may have been Masons. You would find people that were a part of different fraternities and sororities that encouraged the kids that were coming behind them to do well. And so I promised this brother that I would not fire him because of his fraternal persuasion. But you all know that I, I love this brother beyond my fraternal persuasion. As I shared with him by text yesterday, fraternities don't make the men, the men make the fraternities. The quicker we can understand that, maybe less foolishness, we would find ourselves on in college campuses nationwide. So, I am proud, although a little disheartened, that my brother, Brother Kitty Pat, is the newest member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Congratulations, Kenny. You even got your shirt on today, don't you? 
See, I see that shirt. I see that shirt. They didn't catch that shirt. I caught that shirt. We're proud of you, Kitty. We're proud of you, Kitty, for all that you're doing. You keep up the good work. You keep up the good work. Because some glad morning, there will be no Masons over there. There will be no Alphas over there. There will be no AKAs or Deltas over there. Some glad morning, all God's children are going to shout all over God's head. So we're just very proud of you, Kitty, and your achievement, and all of you who have achieved such goals. At this time, let us continue in worship. And after this song by the choir, it would not be a fitting end to 2015 if we did not hear from, I guess I can say this, but it's either Amanda Smith and Jackie Thomas, uh, one of the matriarchs of our church. Uh, Sister Jackie Thomas. All right, so after the choir sings this song, we'll have the last sermonic solo of 2015 being sung by our very own Jackie Thomas. Let the church say amen. Amen.
that the Lord change our name. Change who we are. And he made us even better. Sister Harris, um, I'm going to do like the old school preachers used to do. Um, at the end of service, can you sing a little through it all? You'll know, you know, you know, understand by the time I'm done why through it all would be important. You might understand sooner than later. Um, there's a word from the Lord. Acts 27th chapter. Verses 39 through 44. It finds the Apostle Paul shipwrecked. Acts 27, 39 through 44. When you found it, won't you stand for the reading of God's word? When all who are able stand in reverence to God's word. Acts 27, 39 through 44. And the morning, they did not recognize the land, but they noticed a bay with a beach on which they planned to run the ship ashore. So they cast off the anchor left them in the sea. At the same time, they loosened the ropes that tied the steering oars. Then hoisting the foresail to the wind, they made for the beach. But striking the reef, they ran the ship aground. The bow stuck and remained immovable. But the stern was being broken up by the force of the waves. The soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners so that none might swim away and escape. But the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and make for the land and the rest to follow, some on planks and others on pieces of the ship. And so it was that all were brought safely to the land. Won't you hold your Bibles high and repeat after me. This is the Word of God. It has transformative power. I will praise God for this preaching moment. And I declare, and I declare that, after this moment, that after this moment, that I shall never, I shall never ever, ever be the same. Be God be praised. You may be seen. The latter part of verse 40. Then hoisting the foresail to the wind, they made for the beach. 44. And the rest to follow, some on planks and others on pieces of the ship. So it was that all were brought safely to the land. I want to talk for a few moments from the latter part of that 40th verse. From the 41st, 4th verse in its entirety. From the subject, I made it. Look at your neighbor and say, I made it. Last Sunday of 2015, it's important for somebody, oh, y'all act like y'all ain't happy that you made it. It's the last Sunday of the year. Maybe if I, maybe, maybe not that y'all follow me, if, if I read it again, you can understand where I'm coming from. And the rest to follow. Some on planks and others on pieces of the ship. And so it was that all were brought safely to the land. 
I'm glad today that I made it. I made it. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the time that was provided to us this week with our family and our friends. We thank you for this time. We come to meet our friends and brothers and sisters in Christ on this last Sunday in 2015, yes, Lord. a day that has been coming ever since creation. Now, Lord, touch the words of my mouth. Let them not be my own understanding nor my opinion. Lord, let them fall fresh from you. Someone may be transformed by renewing of their mind. This indeed is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 At some point in the evolution of the faith or religion that we practice called Christianity, there began a shift, a shift in priorities, a shift, if you will, in perceptions. This evolution probably occurred at the point where Christianity was becoming the dominant religion in society. Maybe not the dominant religion numerically, but yet the dominant religion in power. Yes, there began to be a shift. On, uh, and not only a shift that occurred years ago, but a shift in the faith that continues even in America today. A shift from a faith that belonged to the least of these. A shift from a faith where the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. A shift in the thought of our faith that now has transitioned to being the best of the best. Yes. A no longer room for the least of these. A shift from the last shall be first, to how can I be first in life? Yeah. A shift in the faith. And although our faith has us in tune with victory, victory causes us to consider ourselves the best of the best. A victory causes us to stand and say we are next in line. Yes, the tragedy of this evolution and this paradigm shift in the faith has to deal with the fact that victory cannot be achieved without some trials and tribulations. Yes, right. um, victory is just not handed out at one's beckoning of God. Yes. Victory is not just handed out at one's skills and abilities. But victory in life standing in the front of a line comes about by some ups and some downs. Yes. Some trials and some tribulations, some sleepless nights. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And that's where we missed in our modern day view of the faith. And that's why Christians as soon as some trouble strikes, we don't look to God anymore. Because this misconception that the faith is only for the good times. Um, that the faith is only for moments of success. But I declare that the greatest parts of the faith are when you're in the valleys of life. For when you're in the valleys of life, that's where you experience the power and the purpose of God in your life. The Bible, if we read it closely, in the words of Malcolm X, we'll find that the world has hoodwinked us, bamboozled us, and led us astray. Yes, um, led us astray by the perceptions of the faith that they are given up. But when I read my Bible closely, 
I don't experience people that stuck their chest out as the best of the best. And I don't experience people who found themselves in first in line. I don't experience people who would have today found themselves on the airways of time in great cathedrals. But I find when I read my Bible, God working with some regular human beings to do some extraordinary things. When I read my Bible closely, God takes those who make mistakes and makes them a little bit better. When I read my Bible closely, we find some folks. I see Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve made the first joint marital mistake. Uh, you can blame Eve if you want, but it was Adam that messed us up. Oh, the first mistake, the first mistake of not going to proper marriage counseling happened with Adam and it happened with Eve. One stepping in front of another and the other following out of the purpose of God. And because Adam and Eve were human, because Adam and Eve made a mistake, our souls were foreclosed on years ago. When I hear that out of Adam and Eve still sprung the wealth of humanity today. Oh, there's Jeremiah. A Jeremiah who's not bold as we think he was. The fire that was shut up in his bones seemed easily quenched on a boat ride to Nineveh. And Jeremiah who had some doubts and his doubts found him in the belly of a whale. Now there's still some problem in land. When I read my Bible closely, I find an apostle named Peter that had a temper. He couldn't keep himself under control. Wanted to step out in front of his leader, but yet God still loved Peter. So I declare today, my friends, when we take off the veil of the scripture, we can find that there are people throughout the Bible, from Adam today to Paul in our reading, that experience trials and tribulations. And so should it be for us to be exempt from trials and tribulations? Should it be, should we be exempt from struggles? Should we be exempt from disappointments? Because it is the fact that we stand today despite our disappointments that speaks to the world that God is able. It speaks to the world that he can do what he said would do. Speaks to the world. In the middle of our frailties, God can make us strong. In the middle of our trials, God can give us promise. And so today, we find the Apostle Paul. Yes, sir. The Apostle Paul who is attributed with half of the New Testament. Yes. We find Paul always finding himself in the midst of trouble. Yes, Lord. Always finding him in the midst of stretching. Always finding him in the midst of arguing with his colleagues and his co-workers. We find Paul struggling. Yes, sir, yes, Lord. So I want you to know today that this journey with God, you got to struggle sometimes. If you think because you're on the Lord's side that everybody's going to agree with you, if you think because you're on the Lord's side everything is going to work out, I want you to understand that it's not in the working out that makes the difference, it's in the making it through that makes the difference. So we find here the Apostle Paul. Not like Paul, because as a pastor, when I read Paul, I feel like I got it easy. Paul takes a trip, if you will. I want you to go home and read about Acts 20 to the end of Acts when you get home. And Paul is called to Jerusalem. He goes to Jerusalem. And after he's done all these miraculous things all throughout the region, the Jews sing and seek to lock him up and kill him. He's turned over to the governor. 
governor named Festus and laid up in captivity. The king of Rome called Agrippa has a meeting with Paul. Now if you read closely, you'll find that Paul was a Jew. So his own people wanted to kill him. You'll find if you read closely that Paul had done nothing legally wrong. But you'll also find the brilliance of Paul. Uh, he was an educated man. And from 20 through 23, he stands in the courts of antiquity. And he argues his case. And when he meets Festus, Festus says, Paul, don't you want to go back to your own people? Don't you want to go to Jerusalem and we'll hold court for you in Jerusalem? But Paul says, no, I want to go to the emperor. Yes, sir. I want to have my day with the emperor. Yes. I don't want to have my day with those who are falsely accusing me, but, but I want you to take me to the emperor. I, I want to talk to him myself. Yes. And so I'll stop by here to tell you, my friends, that when you're in the midst of trouble, Understand that God is giving you all that you need to make it through. God is giving you the vernacular to make it through. He's giving you the conversation to make it through. And somebody might be saying today, well, I'm not a lawyer or have the legal ability of Paul. But I declare since Christ came and died for us, the only thing that you have to say is, Lord, have mercy. Lord, make a way out of nowhere. Lord, fix it. Because I can't fix it no more. You just gotta talk to him and tell him what you want. So, Paul gets in front of King Agrippa, gives his case, talked about how he was turned around on the road to Damascus. He talks to Agrippa about how the Lord had changed his life. Then he catches my attention because he looks at the king and he says, and you know it to be true. Yeah. I'm giving us a hint that even those in power at that time knew that the truth of God was real. Yeah. And after talks to Agrippa, after he talks to him, Agrippa finds no fault in Paul. And I want you to stop worrying in 2016 about what folk got to say about you that really find no fault in you. Stop worrying about what people are thinking. Stop worrying about what people are feeling. Stop worrying about pleasing folk. But understand that whatever God has for you is for you. If you just trust in him and never doubt He'll surely bring you out. And so he's talking, he talks to Agrippa here, and he convinces Agrippa, and Agrippa wants to let him go. But Agrippa says, I would let him go if he didn't ask himself to speak to the emperor. See, sometimes you can't take the easy way out. See, that's what it, let me, if, if, if Hunt was Paul, I would have pleaded my case with Agrippa, and I would have packed my bags and went home easy way out. See, many of us want to live the easy way out. And because a lot of times the easy way out is not what God is calling us to do. So Paul didn't take the easy way out. He said, no, I, I want to see the big dog. I, I want to plead my case to the big dog. I, I don't want to talk to you. Lord. God's got a plan for me. And, and the same God that had me stand up in front of Agrippa is the same God that's going to bless me in front of the emperor. I got work to do. Look at your neighbor and say, I got work to do. So, he asked to see the emperor and so Agrippa gave him his request. He finds himself on a ship to Rome. All right, for those of you that, that don't come to Bible class and then skip Sunday school, let me tell you what's going on here. About 90% of y'all. 
What that means is he was on the latter part of his journey. He was on the latter part of his destination. In order for him to get where he had to go, he had to go through some trials. See, what happens a lot of times, your enemy thinks they are putting you in a trick bag, but the only thing they're doing is setting you up for what God had for you. Oh, I, I, can I just talk about it for a minute? I, I'm going to stop this up. I am glad that I caught the hell that I caught earlier in my ministry because if I didn't catch the hell that I caught, I wouldn't be standing here today. And so what might have looked like something that was going to hurt me was a blessing that was on the way. And I ain't looked back because I thank the Lord for all that I've been through. The enemy thought that I could tell him now I could break his heart. I could make him feel wounded. But God said, I'm just allowing you to break his heart so he can do better. And I want you to know the Lord is just allowing some people to break your heart so you can open the door for it to be the exit out of your life that they need to have. You'll go through some changes. You'll go through some changes. You'll go through some disappointments. But all of it is designed just for God to get you to your destination. He just keeps trying to get your attention. 